Hi ladies, it's Dawn and welcome back to my channel. So today I am gonna be doing a get ready with me, a chatty get ready with me. And I'm gonna be sharing a few new like little techniques that I, I've learned for eye makeup and blush in particular. And I'm gonna be sharing some new drugstore products that I've recently learned about. And um, I hope that you will enjoy this video. So let's just get to it. So the first thing I'm gonna share with you is a product that I found out about from Frugalista blog here on YouTube. I'll link her channel below. And it is the Catrice One Minute Face Perfector. And it looks like this. I have never tried Catrice products, but Laura Ray Beauty and uh, many women to use Catrice often. I think Natalie the Beauty Diva does. And um, it's just hard for me to find. I think the only place I could find it was Walmart. And I don't have a Walmart super close to me. So um, anyway, I placed an order. So I have a few Catrice products to share with you. So this product only comes in one color. It's a one minute face perfector. You can use it to bronze your face beneath makeup and, and use as a primer or you could use this product as like your foundation. And for me, I like to use it a little bit beneath my foundation. I thought that the color it comes in, the one color that it comes in would be a little too dark for me, but it's not. Um, it seems to work really well. And it does just give me a slight tan that looks like I have self tanned my face. And I never self tan my face because when I do, it seems to, the tanner grabs onto my freckles and just darkens them up and I don't like that look. So when I do tan my body, which I have been doing, I've been self tanning, it's hard to tell because <laughs> I'm so pale. I've only done it twice so far. I just do like a thin layer and I have to build it. So in about a week, I might look like I have a little color, but I skip my face altogether. I do my neck, I do it from like here down. So anyway, this product seems to be a good product to make my face match the rest of my body. I was using a beauty sponge, but honestly, it applies much better with my fingers, so. So there's that, I don't know if you can really tell. I'm a little bit bronzer, but it also, like I said, is a, a perfector. So it's like a primer. It has that like um, sort of that slip that like dimethicone makes you have after you apply like the Smashbox primer or um, the e.l.f. primer. Um, I have a little dry skin on my chin. So anyways, um, that's that. And then when I use that product, I just want to use a very sheer foundation because I don't want to go in then with like a really medium or full coverage foundation that will obscure the faux tan I just tried to create. And I'm going to use the number seven advanced lift and luminate. I think it's called. Let me just take a look at it. The Protect and Perfect Advanced All-in-One Foundation. It's very hydrating and it's age-defying and it has an SPF of 50 in it. I do really like this. I tried the whole number seven range, um, Lift and Luminate range over the winter months and I really did enjoy it very much. Now that it's springtime and I'm using um, more brightening skincare, but I think I would definitely go back to the Lift and Luminate over the fall and winter months. Okay, just moving it. I'm using a Real Techniques foundation brush. I love this foundation brush. I've always loved the Tarte foundation brush, and this is probably my all-time favorite foundation brush, but it's a little more pricey, and this one really gets the job done on a discount. Um, and I feel like this one's a lot easier to pack, and it's easier to wash, because the bamboo one has a bamboo holder on it and sometimes I like to let my um, cosmetic brushes sit in soapy water for a little bit just to kind of like take a bath and I can't do that with the ones that have wooden handles so I think this one's great for travel and things like that and I really like it a lot. I really want to try the Real Techniques brushes that are kind of like dupes for um, the Artiste brushes. They have the handle. Um, if you've tried those, let me know. There's one that I've had my eye on and I'd really like to get it. It's not expensive, but you know, I don't really need it. So, so anyway, I just put on like one 
one layer of that. I think it's got a really beautiful finish. It does um, even out my skin tone and it makes imperfections look a lot better. It covers any redness. It doesn't completely cover my freckles and I like that. And I just feel like it's very lightweight and my skin can really breathe when I have this on. So I'm really loving this. I think I am going to pass on replenishing my It CC Cream that I've recently fallen back in love with. I'm gonna use that one up and then I'm just gonna keep purchasing this one because it feels very, very similar to me and it has the SPF of 50 in it. So I'll be using this one a lot this summer. Okay, so I was at Target and I had to do some grocery shopping. And when I was standing in line, the line was so long, it curved all the way out by the cosmetics. And I noticed that Target has a Winky Lux display. Um, now, they carry Winky Lux, the lipsticks, the eyeshadow palettes. Winky Lux is a cleaner beauty brand, and I've talked about it a lot in my channel in the past. And then I noticed that near it, they have like a whole clean beauty section. They carry the full range of Mineral Fusion, which I once could only find at Whole Foods and healthy food stores. Target now carries the full range, and that is my absolute favorite Um cosmetic brand and I've talked about it at nauseum on my channel. I'll link a couple videos below in case you're interested, but um, oh my gosh, it's such great quality. It's way better than 100% pure, just as clean and at a much better price point. And I feel like the quality of the makeup is a lot better too. And then they have Honest Beauty. They carry a full range of Honest Beauty now. Like Target, now that I've like gone back to like using more conventional products for my makeup, suddenly I'm finding broad ranges of these products at Target, which I think is fantastic. So anyway, they do have Winky Lux. I love Winky Lux. I have three of their palettes. Let me show you. I have the Cashmere Kitten Palette. And it looks like this. And for cleaner beauty, it performs just as well as like Juvia's Place, um, ColourPop. It's at about a similar price point where it's mid-range. It's not um, luxury. Um, this one is the Winky Lux Coffee Palette. And look how beautiful that is. This one does have a very slight fragrance of coffee. I think they actually have some coffee kind of infused in some of the eyeshadows, which is fine with me because the caffeine is good for your eyes anyways. And then uh, this one's my favorite, the Winky Lux Kitten Palette. This is the first one I ever got. And I can't part with these. I love them so much. And this one, I you can see it's very well used. It's a little bit messy. And I love this palette. So I think I'm gonna use this one today, the Cashmere Kitten. But if you want to try any products from Winky Lux, I would highly recommend the eyeshadow palettes and the lipsticks. They're amazing. My favorite lipstick, and they do carry it at Target, is Butterscotch from Winky Lux. So anyways, the first thing I'm going to do is go in with this. And I'm just using a Tarte, or is this a, yeah, I think this is a Tarte brush. It's one of those dual-sided brushes. And I'm just going to put this all over my mobile lid. and go up and over my crease. So yesterday was Easter, and usually on Easter, my family goes out to brunch. We always have, all through my childhood, all through my adulthood. I don't think I've ever had an Easter dinner at home, or brunch at home. We often just go to church, go to brunch, and um, and then that's what I do with my family, my immediate family and my side of the family. And then we also get together the same weekend or the following weekend with my husband's family. And we, we do cook for that one. Actually, my sister-in-law's cook and one of them has us all over and it's really nice. And so yesterday was Easter and happy Easter. I hope that you all had a really blessed day. We... Um, eight here. My husband cooked. It was just the six of us, my four kids, my husband and I. Um, we did do a drive-by at my parents later and drop an Easter lily off on their porch. I just feel so bad because my mom puts a lot of effort into Easter. Like that's my dad and my mom's treat for us. 
you know, taking all of us out and my sister's family too. And she, it just brings them a lot of joy to do that. And I look forward to it every year. So I don't know, they, the two of them were just home and that made me feel a little bit sad. I know that they're fine. I'm much more sensitive than my mom is. <laughs> just, it takes a lot to really rattle her. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do now is take the pink color right beneath it. And these do have colors on the back, but I don't have my glasses on, so I'm just gonna show them to you. So anyways, they, they were fine, they had a good day, but I was in a bit of a funk. I really had to pull myself out of it. I feel like I was even like a little unpleasant. You know, I sort of just really was having a hard time engaging during the day and I felt a little bit bored, you know, which I don't usually feel bored. I just was feeling sad, you know, for the first time over this whole stay in place order. I just really just felt sad. So last night, my husband took my son out driving. He's getting his driver's license. So, or so he's got a permit and they went to drop off the Lily at my parents. And then they went to drop off another one at my sister-in-law's house. Okay. So now I'm going to take this really pretty purple color right here, this dark color. And I just have this brush. I feel like I got this brush in like a, a, one of those Ulta kits that they give you while you purchase at Christmas time and they have like all the colors in them, a bunch of blushes. Um, you know, they come with a little handle, one of those cases. And I love these. I got these for my daughter like a couple of years ago when they were little, 10 years ago when they were littler and couldn't wear makeup to play in. And I just kept these brushes and I love them. So anyways, um, I was in sort of a sour mood. So I cleaned up and I um, brought all the laundry up. You might see it on the floor somewhere. I tried to tuck it out of view. I was folding laundry last night. I just put on like a Christian YouTube video and I just listened while I folded laundry and I got sort of like in the zone where I was kind of thinking more about instead of like what I was missing about what the day was really about, which is what I should have been doing all along. And it really helped. I felt ashamed that I was not my best yesterday. Um, but it really, really, really helped. And I'm trying to like just kind of stay in the word and focus on what's eternal and not things that are going to pass in time, like this quarantine. This is all going to eventually end and we're going to go back to our normal lives. And there might be some permanent changes, but I feel like we will just quickly resume some sort of normality. And I need to keep my heart focused on what's real and lasting. All right, so now the next thing, I think this will be the last thing. I've got so much eyeshadow on my eyes. I'm just gonna take this lightest color right here and just a fluffy kind of blending brush. And I'm just gonna lighten up right here and in the inner corner and in the center of my lid just to make my eyelid space look bigger. Ever since I learned, I mentioned in a recent video, my hooded eye video that I did, I learned that you're not supposed to put this really bright color up here because it makes that space stand out more. Um, so I haven't been doing that, but it's hard because old habits really do die hard. But I do think my eyes look better when I don't do that. Okay, so that's my eyeshadow. The next thing I'm gonna do is take my Lord, my CoverGirl Exhibitionist. This is like a waterproof eyeliner. And this is another new trick that I've learned. You know, it takes me forever to learn what people knew for a very long time. I've just never really been into eyeshadow and doing all those techniques. But now that I'm older, I really want to learn as much as I can. So now I t I'm taking this instead of lining above my lash line, I'm just tight lining with it. And I think it does really make my eyes look bigger than when I try to do a wing or put like a darker, like a liquid liner that way. But I do still think that's really pretty, but I just haven't been doing it lately. And I kind of like the way it looks. I'm just gonna curl my lashes. I need to get a new eyelash 
curler. Do you guys change these very often? I forget about them. I don't even think I've ever changed them. I think that they're the original. I need to like really give this thing a good bath and get some new replacement pads for in it. And um, yeah, I bet my eyelashes will look a lot better if I do that. I always forget about those general maintenance things. I do wash my eyeshadow brushes a lot, like several times a week, just because I use so many colors and they need to be cleaned. And I wash my foundation brush really regularly, but little things like that I forget about. Okay, now I found this on Catrice. Catrice's website when I was purchasing the One Minute Blur, and it's an eyebrow, just a very simple eyebrow product. I believe this is in like light brown. I'll link it below. But I do like it. It's really good for like drying. Like if you're trying to make your brows look really well groomed and you're kind of boxing them in, like you see women do here on YouTube, it's really good for that. It's a really just nice product for filling in my brows and it was not expensive at all. That's a good thing about Catrice. I feel like Catrice is like on par with Wet n Wild price-wise. It's not an expensive makeup brand. I have not purchased anything from Wet n Wild in a really long time, but Laura Ray Beauty loves their um, foundation. I did try one of their foundations, the Photo Finish, years ago, and I really liked it, but I didn't like it enough to keep buying it. So I have not tried their new one. You'll have to let me know if any of you have tried it and if you really like it. Okay, so there's that. Just made my brows look a little bit neater. The other product that I really like for my brows is the Essence Make Me Brow for a drugstore choice. And both of these are kind of like a light brown, sort of taupey color. And my brows are darker than my hair and they don't have a lot of gray in them yet. So, and this is really nice for just kind of making them look neat. For my eyelashes, I'm going to use the Voluminous, L'Oreal Voluminous in Carbon Black. And I really like this. What I really like about it is that it does add a little volume to your lashes, but it doesn't just lift them and make them longer like this one would, the L'Oreal Telescopic. This one reminds me a lot of Lancome Definicils. I feel like it's a good dupe for that. Um, and I really like that mascara a lot, but it doesn't add a lot of volume and it doesn't fan out my lashes. It really just kind of lifts them and lengthens them. So if that's the kind of look you like, almost like how 1960s, like when you see pictures of Twiggy and they have like these long kind of spidery lashes, that sounds unappealing, but it actually looks kind of nice um, with that because they're not, you don't have false lashes on, so they're not like extremely long and obnoxious, but I do like that one. And then I also like the L'Oreal Voluminous False Fibers for really thickening my lashes. Well, I really like this one just because it does fan my lashes out so much. So I did recently pick up the L'Oreal Voluminous Primer to go with it. I never purchased this in the past, but Beauty with the old girl, Sheila, she has a YouTube channel here. I'll link it below. She suggested trying it because she knows how much I like the voluminous carbon black. And she said it would really, um, you know, add a little more volume and length if you use the primer with it. So I am using the primer with it. And now I think I like this one more than the false fibers. And I might not buy the false fibers because I recently had a really bad experience with it. It does have those fibers in it that I've always loved. This has been a favorite of mine for years and years and years. And I only had one really bad experience with it, but it was a really bad one. Recently, I felt like I had something in my eye all day long and it was like up here and it was scratching my eyeball. And throughout the day, I kept like rubbing my eye, trying to get whatever it was to move down into the corner where I could wipe it out. I kept going to my magnifying mirror and looking in to see if I have like a lash or something. And my eye was just getting increasingly irritated to the point that I really couldn't think about anything else. I had washed my eye makeup off because it was so uncomfortable. And I still felt this thing just scratching my eye and it was driving me nuts. So my husband came home from work and I told him what was going on with my eyeball and he took a look and he said there's something like up 
in my eye. He had his iPhone um, light on and he took a cute, a damp Q-tip and just kind of held my my eyelid open and took a sweep in there. And it was like a chunk of black, like one of those fibers. And I couldn't see it because it got like so high up. And I guess when I would just, like when I was looking, I'd put my head back like this and it would go up. And then I would look straight ahead into the mirror and I couldn't see anything. And so for like the rest of the week, I had a very irritated eye. It was very watery. Um, I didn't have like obviously a corneal abrasion or anything, but I felt like it really scratched something in my eye. It was definitely a big irritant. And I know that can happen with any mascara we use. It could happen with this, it could happen with anything. But it just made me want to put away the false fibers for a while because I was so like, I don't want to do that again. I didn't like that at all. Okay, so there's that. And I don't know if I should put on any um, powder today. I don't think I need it. I really don't. The older I get, the less I use powder. But what I think I will use is... Hmm. I think I want to use a cream blush today. And one I've really liked for a very long time is the e.l.f. cream blush that come in the little pots like this. I recently wanted to get another one in sort of a pinkier color because this one's very peachy. It's really pretty. But sometimes like when I'm wearing pinker or purple eyeshadows, I'd rather have a pink or purple one. And I couldn't find it on Ulta's website, but they do have like a pan of four cream blushes from e.l.f. that would have a color like that in it. But today, since Target now carries the broad range of Mineral Fusion, Winky Lux, and Honest Beauty, I think I'm gonna use the Honest Beauty blush. And this is in the color Truly Exciting. And I really like this one. It's a very neutral color. So even though I have like pinker and purple, it's not quite orange and it's got enough pink and sort of just those terracotta shades. When I use a cream blush, I do have a trick. I like to use a stippling brush. And this is a Morphe stippling brush. Elf makes some, Real Techniques makes some. They're a dual fiber brush where it has fibers that are long, as you can see, almost like a shag haircut on a makeup brush, where they kind of hang in different levels. And so it picks up the blush in a very um, just a minimalistic way. And it's very easy to add color instead of placing, like if I used a thicker brush, something like this, it's denser, and it would just put down a lot more color and I would have to try to remove some of it if I went overboard. This gets the right amount on every time and you can always add more, but once you have too much on, it's harder to take it away. So that's why I like to use these brushes. And I always make sure that they're, um, synthetic because if they are like real hair brushes, like animal hair brushes, the fibers are porous and it will absorb your product into the fiber so, or the hair. So I always make sure I have a synthetic brush with dual fibers like this. And this is just a stippling brush from Morphe. I have a couple of these. They're really, really nice. I like to use them for cream blushes, but I also like to use them for powder blushes. And they're really great for um, bronzer too. So you don't go overboard with your bronzer. And I just stipple it on like so. And if I want more color, I can always just add more. This just is so pretty. It gives you a really natural, I always hit up here too, since I pink up a little bit in the sun. Well, we all do. It just makes you look more naturally sun-kissed. I think the combination of the one minute blur that has the um, kind of tanning properties in it, and then this really kind of natural blush. I don't know if you could still find it and truly exciting. I think they have another one that's exactly like it and they just changed the name. I'll link it because I was trying to find another one of those for one of my daughters. I ended up getting her. I couldn't find it. So I got her a different name, but the color is essentially exactly the same. So I will link either truly exciting or the new named one um, for you below. So there, there's that. Look how pretty that looks for summer, you know, for a redhead or someone very fair like me who doesn't tan, you feel like you are not pasty and you have some color. 
Okay, one thing I'm gonna add to my eyes is my Tarte Fake Awake. This is not a drugstore product. Actually, do I have anything like this? I'm not gonna use it because I don't. What I do have is the milk, those milk products from NYX. The milk products from NYX. This one I purchased for the same. I actually got this a long time ago before I got the Fake Awake. Um, because I wanted something to line my inner lash line and make my eyes appear brighter. Um, this comes in a different, few different shades. I got the white one and the white is way too light. Let me see if I could, there's a way I can do it without messing up my eye makeup. I think there is. See, you just very gently touch. The Fake Awake is more of like a skin tone. See there, I put too much on that one and that one's like much more natural. So um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> I'm just gonna add a little more on this one. So it's, like I said, once you put it on, you can't take it away. So there, I've got my very white rim, rimmed eyeballs. But you know what, as I blink in a little while, they will just kind of wash some of that away, but it does make your eyes look brighter. And I like to use those kinds of products for it. The, fart <laughs> the Tarte Fake Awake is beautiful. So that's the one I would recommend. I have a new lipstick that I'm crazy about and I have I have shared it with you on Instagram. Many of you had asked me in one of my Instagram stories what color lipstick I had on that day and it is the L'Oreal Tickled Pink and I purchased this at the end of January when I was getting really kind of sad about winter still happening and I thought this color would really just be a really nice pink to make me think of spring and it does and it's so beautiful. Let me go ahead and put this on. And it's not a matte, it's a cream, and it has a very slight shimmer to it, but I think it's such a pretty color. And I don't use a lip liner with it. Um, I don't have one this light. I probably should look for one, but I don't always use lip liner. Um, but it's very creamy, very moisturizing, and it's just a really beautiful color for spring. So this is the finished look. And if you do want to add like a powder over your makeup, since this is kind of a spring and summer makeup look, there's two powders that I would recommend. If you just want a makeup powder, you could use like the Maybelline Fit Me. That is a very nice loose powder. It just sets your makeup and doesn't look cakey. But the other thing that I really like to do in the spring and summer months is purchase one of those powdered SPFs. Derma E makes a really nice one. Um, Color Science makes a nice one, but that one's very expensive. And um, Goop, Super Goop makes a really nice one. And you can carry it in your purse. You could use it to reset your makeup if you get any like oily breakthrough, but it also is great for reapplying your sunblock during the day. You could use it on the backs of your hands, on your neck, and it's just great to have for the summertime. So that's what I would be doing. Um, on a day like today, you know, to reapply SPF and um, set my makeup. So anyway, thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope that you liked this Get Ready With Me. And if you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and ask me a question for an upcoming um, Q&A that I'm going to be doing. Um, I need some more questions. I have enough to make a video, but I kind of wanted to... Um, I don't know. I want more questions. So if you have any more questions, go ahead and ask them down in the comment section. And I will see you next time. Have a blessed and beautiful day.